You and I, we all have ever felt sad, disappointed, hopeless, or even cried because we felt to achieve something. It could be us failing to make a relationship work. It could be us failing our exams and get scolded by our parents. <coughs> we have all been there. But when we fell, it's not the end of the world because there's such thing as second chance. Second chances are out there. They allow us to accomplish something that we used to fail before. But second chance are only effective <coughs> if we work hard for it. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. 15 years ago, when I first started primary school, I loved studying. I had in all my homework a week before the due date. I attended class 100%. And I would score at least 95% for all my exams. Now, studying isn't an issue for me. This continual to secondary year, my O levels, I still have no problem with studying. All this accomplishment have made my parents proud of me. I've managed to put smiles on their face. But when I started A levels, things started to take a different turn. It was only three months when I started A-level, and I already managed to fail two tests. I'm behind on all my assignments, and the worst, I am absent from class often. <coughs> all this is because I learned how to procrastinate. I get addicted to video games. I hang out with friends more than they think my books. <laughs> and I thought studying for A-level is like a piece of cake, just like what I did in O-levels and primary school. But as day, months pass, it had proved me wrong. All this has led to the worst. And by the worst, I mean failing my final exam. Now, when I receive my report card, I was disappointed in myself, of course, but when I hand my report card to my mother, she did not scold me. She took a look at my report card, tears were coming down from her eyes, and she just threw the report card on the floor and went in her room. Now my dad is on a different level. <laughs> he scolded me when he wake up until he fall asleep. <laughs> it was horrifying. <laughs> Even my friends. I used to be the smart kid in class, but they were all shocked when they see all these fails on the paper. Not only there were embarrassment to my parents and my friends, my results are also a million miles away from getting me qualified to my higher education. In my case, getting a degree. Now, nevertheless, I still try. I try and try to apply to universities all around the globe, hoping there is one university out there to accept me. Now, as months and months pass, every university that I applied to rejected me. I was the one and only from all my 100 plus of friends to experience this. All my, all my friends managed to secure a university to study, whether it's in Brunei, United Kingdom, US, or even China. Every time when one of my friends had to flew off, I had to go to the airport to send them for farewell. I'm very happy for them to pursue the higher education, but a piece of me inside is broken. Why couldn't it be me flying? Why couldn't, me, why couldn't it be me having a university and make my parents smile again? I kept having all these thoughts while I sent my friends off. And then when I go home, the university registration then closed. I can no longer apply to any more university, which means no more studying for me throughout the year. Now, when I asked my dad, what should I do? Then he said, son, maybe you are too incapable to study. So to be not any more useless to the family, start to work. So 
So that leads me to no choice, which is to work. Now, I got a job offer as a graphic designer all the way at Belai, an hour away from my home in Bandar. I had to move out. I live alone. I work alone. And I cook for myself only. Now, did I enjoy this working life at all? Not a single bit. The whole of me keep wants to study. I had the desperation to study, but I just can't. As a graphic designer, I work closely with a computer, and every time while I'm working, I'm always on the internet trying to search and search for any other universities that are still willing to accept me. I still had a little bit of hope, but apparently there were no glimpses of hope at all. I worked, and I worked, and I worked for the next nine months. After working for nine months, in the educational world, this is where university begins a new semester. The results are out, university registration are open again, Again, I tried all my luck in trying to reply to all the universities around the globe. I waited. A month, there was still no reply. Two months, still no reply. But on the third month, a second chance appeared in my mailbox. Now, it was an offer letter from this very university to allow me to study intensively for a foundation course which is known as Unibridge. All I need to do is just to pass all the papers so that I can start a degree here. Now of course I was so happy, I was overwhelmed when I see the offer letter. So after I finished work, I decided to drive all the way from Blight back home just to show my parents this second chance I had. But when my dad saw this paper, he said, if you don't want to work hard for it again, don't even bother taking this offer. There are people out there that works harder than you, so they deserve more than you. So if you really want to take this offer, <coughs> work hard for it. That was the reality check for me. I kept thinking about it the whole time, while I'm eating, while I'm showering, before I sleep. I told myself, if I want to start to put smiles on my parents' face again, the time is now. If I want to get a degree like all my other friends and cousins, the time is now. And if I really want to get back onto the educational track and not working yet, the time is now. I think, and I think, and I think, and I decided to take this offer. I prioritized what I needed to do. The next day, I quit my job. I threw away all my video games. I lost contact with all my friends for the sake of studying. And believe it or not, day in and day out, I attended lectures from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Even after that, I still came in the library, trying to do more on further research, and even revise so that I can do my best. Now all this continues until a point that I even feel like giving up. I was, I was very tired, I was exhausted, but every time I felt like giving up, there were images of me shedding tears because I can no longer study, my parents throwing away my paper, and, and not having any friends to get a degree with. Now, this is what pushed me beyond my limits and to not waste away this second chance. Now, after three months of studying this unit bridge, exam season arrives. I had to set for four papers and every time before I sit for a paper, my heart beats as fast as a Ferrari <laughs> and every time before I set for a paper, the negative thoughts start to come into my head. What if I felt my exam again? What if I felt to see my parents cry again? All these thoughts came into my head. But when the time starts for exam, I took my pen, I wrote down whatever I learned on the piece of paper, and I just hoped for the best. 
on my last paper, on the last few seconds of my paper, when the examiner said, everyone, stop writing and put your pants down. I looked around me. Everyone was smiling, was cheering, was so relieved that they finished the exams. But I was still frozen as a stone there. I felt more burden right now. I felt more stress because now I have to wait for the moment of truth, my results. Now I cannot sleep properly. I cannot eat properly for the next two weeks. And like I said, for the next two weeks, my result came. When I look into my paper of my results, I managed to score A's for all my subjects. Just like I dream of. Well, Toastmasters and guests, today I'm standing here as a student that's doing my first year in science. <clears throat> I'm a person that used to fail before, make my parents stress, but today I proved myself wrong. I managed to stand up for myself because of the second chance that was given to me. So fellow, fellow ladies and gentlemen, if you are presented with a second chance, make it count and don't waste it. Back to you.